Dead Sea, Rick, get on up here. You're never gonna figure out how I'm picking the next comedian. Fucking puzzle shit. Welcome to Saw 18. All right, keep it going for our host. Give it up for Brittany. Give it up for Everett. There's something safe to do in Everett on a Friday night. That's, that's definitely a good sign, right? Um, so I'm an Everett kid. I, I grew up around here, and I, I love performing for Everett. It's really good to be here. I was uh, driving on my way here, and I was going through Seattle, and I had to get off the road really quick because I saw they were having that REI sidewalk sale, you know, where they have, like, all that used stuff. And I was like, yes, I got up. And it was just a bunch of people camping under the freeway. And I was like, oh, man. I felt like I was in Everett all of a sudden. I was like, what, what's going on here? I love Everett, though, because uh, it's different. They have a sign that says, welcome to beautiful Everett. Liars. Fucking liars. Okay. Uh, you know, we don't play Pokemon Go. We play Tweaker Go. Because every time I turn around, there's a Tweaker popping up. I don't get Pikachu. I get a Tweaker's butt cheek or two. That's a real story. I got two of them. I got two butt cheeks. I got the whole set, the collector set. Uh, depending on the sketchy towns, I performed comedy and my phone will update with the Tweaker Girl app. So like I was in Aberdeen and it went off and I was like, okay, we're in freaking Aberdeen. But uh, but I love Everett. Everett's weird, Everett's real, you know, um, so so it's good. Now I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about myself. I, uh, I grew up, I, I come from humble beginnings. And that's code word for something. Anybody know what that is? Being broke as fuck, right? <laughs> You ever hear someone say, I come from humble beginnings? You're like, okay, bro, calm down. You're trying to sound a little too classy. You grew up poor. I grew up poor. Now, it wasn't Project Poor. It wasn't Cockroach Poor. It's something I call KFC Poor. Uh, oh, I got to laugh. Okay, you think about chicken, right? Kentucky Fried Chicken? Eh, wrong. Wrong, wrong. Close though, close though. That stands for Kmart Food Stamps. And the worst one, no Costco. I'm like, wait a minute, why is no Costco a bad thing? I grew up, my neighbors had all those Costco treats and backpacks and all that cool stuff. I didn't have it because we couldn't afford it. Uh, the only thing that we had in bulk were, uh, what's that called? Powdered milk. Anybody have that? Oh, yeah. yeah. And government cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, powdered milk, I'd rather snort that than mix it with water. That stuff is freaking disgusting. Um, I also grew up on food stamps, and that's something that not too many people know about. Everybody has these cool undercover broke-ass cards called EBT. So you can, yeah, he's got one! Donate some money, he needs it after the show, after the show. Um, so you, I get, you, know, you get these broke-ass undercover cards, so you can be in line buying all this stuff and scanning it and be like, yeah, it's these, uh, yeah, I look cool, I still keep my street cred. I grew up in the time where they, the government gave you Food monopoly money. It was government food monopoly money. It was like these dollar bills you'd have to go. And I tried to break a 20 when I went to get milk for my mom and get some like change back. And they made ones in that, so I couldn't even buy no candy out of that damn thing, right? That stuff sucked. Um, the other thing is Kmart poor. Uh, my, my mom, once a year, I grew up with a single mom, and she would say, once a year, you get to come and pick out anything you want in the store. And I looked forward to that, and it was in the summer, so it was like a second Christmas. Not the Christmas where the firefighters brought my presents. Does anybody can relate? Yeah, yeah. Those those uh, boy number one and boy number two presents. And if it's mislabeled, you open it up and I got like a Barbie Jeep, you know. I had to camera that up, but um, no. So Kmart, we would go. And if anybody doesn't remember what Kmart is or know what it is, it's if the dollar store and Walmart had a birth defect child. That's essentially what Kmart was. Like it was. They had the blue light special. They had this icy machine that I always wanted. So we went in this one time, and she'd say, you pick anything, Christmas, birthday, school clothes. And I'm like, cool, can I get an icy? And the answer was no. And I'm like, wait, 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 like, that's a dollar. That cart's about to be 500. This doesn't make sense, right? So we keep going, and I, I put everything in it. And what got me was when we went to turn to the register, she said, nope, to the back of the store. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, yeah, it wasn't Kmart port, it was Kmart layaway port. That's like a basement in a basement of port, right? It's suburb port, but that's that's how I grew up. Um, you know, uh, so with that, like, I was raised by a single mom. You're relating, right? 
That's actually the reason that I quit high school, because by the time we'd pay off some of those clothes, I'd show up in like outdated MC Hammer pants and a JoJo Siwa t-shirt. I, I, the high school was hard. But uh, I, I'm sorry, I pulled a Will Smith. I was lying to you guys. They actually kicked me out, kind of like with Will Smith when he quit the academy, right? Yeah. They could kick his ass out. Uh, oh, what? Actually, the real answer is never, because they kicked me out! I did the alternative plan, the GED with a degree. That's what my mom said. She goes, if you get a GED and a degree, I don't care about high school. And I was like, all right, I'll go sell drugs and get my GED. <laughs> Woo! That backfired. But I'm, I'm like 20 plus years sober, so it worked out. Uh, so that's a little bonus information that wasn't part of it. Thank you guys, thank you guys. Uh, you don't have to buy me a drink. It's, I'm a cheap comic. I'm just going to drink soda all day. Um, so, uh, what's that? <laughs> I'm booked every month, all right. I gotta have new material every time, Jesus Christ. I get the extra eight minutes, right? No, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take any extra minutes. You'll be bored with me in a second. Um, so yeah, so I was talking about uh, growing up with a single mom and watching my mom grow up, I, I got a lot of love for her because she had to sacrifice. She had to be both parents. And I learned two things about single, single moms. Number one is embarrassing to say in front of you guys, but single moms are definitely PTF. <laughs> what do you think? Down for fun, right? Down to fun? No, down to fun. Like saying that about my mom is kind of kind of bad, but I got a brother and sister from two different dads, so yeah. Like I, I'm, 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 I know the stork didn't come. There weren't like two like stork. No, yeah, she was down to fun. But she also knows how to whoop their kids' ass. That is something for real. As a single mom, she had to put me in line. I was the oldest. I was the pain in the ass. My mom did it organic. She had this thing called the switch. No, I usually get a couple nods when I say that. And then I get a lot of glossed over looks like, what the fuck are you talking about? So the switch was organic because she'd tell me to go pick a branch off the bush to get my butt beat with. And I did the same mistake every kid made when they got that situation. Pick that skinny one, right? Oh. oh. And then she upgraded from that. She, she stayed organic, but she went to the wood spoon. And that had a little more, like a little uh, extra to it until it broke. So long story short, the scariest time around my house was when Sally, the Tupperware lady came, because mom was gonna re-up on something new. So me and my brother and sister, we snuck up and we listened over. And she's sitting here telling this Tupperware lady, I need a durable spoon for cooking. The fuck you do? <laughs> I want my ass with that. I don't care if I get an extra Tupperware cup with this purchase. That's some bullshit. And she wouldn't even get the solid spoon. She would get the slatted spoon, which had the little, see someone moan, they know. So when I was getting my ass beat, if I wasn't careful and I moved too much, my ass would be trending on Twitter. Or you could play tic-tac-toe on that thing. Because I'd get those different hash marks, and it was not cool. Not cool at all. I, uh, now I'm a parent myself, and uh, I got the tattoo of my kids right here. Uh, it's proof they walk all over me. That's my like out of the box joke. They walk right all over me. But my son, my nine-year-old, was giving me crap the other day, and uh, I was struggling with him. And I was trying like the whole socially acceptable parenting styles of like you're grounded from your electronics for 30 minutes, or you know, I had to go stand in the corner, right? But no. So I'm like, okay, like. I got, I got frustrated. I got to be honest with you guys. I got frustrated. So I went old school with my parenting. I looked at this. I said, go get a switch. And he ran off. He knew exactly what I was talking about. Or so I thought. Kid brought back his Nintendo Switch. What in the hell is going on? I was beat with a switch so that you can play on a switch? Like, this shit don't work out. So uh, I'm not advocating for beating your kids when they're good. Only when they're bad. <laughs> just joking. Just joking. It's a joke. We're a comedy show. Relax. Relax. I know, I got one back there. You better put that ticket in my name over there. Um, so uh, I'm also, one thing I'm working on right now is I'm 39 and I'm getting to the point where I'm getting sick of working for people, so I want to be my own boss. So I've been getting into entrepreneurship and, and I've learned that to, to create your own business, you gotta, you gotta find something that's missing. You gotta fill a need that's already open because there's so many things out there. And so I've been trying to look at unexpected places. It's about to get a little dark. Has anybody in here gotten unsolicited dick pics? Like this is a this is a moment of truth, right? You've had a cup, right? More than five? More than ten? More than fifty? Hell yeah. 
Oh my god! That's like, where's Waldo of penises? Oh shit, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I finally got to relate to that. I was, uh, I went to bed, I was in a hotel traveling across the country, I woke up, my phone went off and I opened it up and I got scared to death with a penis on my phone. And I was like, what the hell? But it was worse because it was my own penis. I was sexting with my girlfriend and forgot to clear my browsing history, or not browsing, the picture history. I scared the shit out of myself with my penis. So that gave me the idea. I'm like, oh my god, people, like, I empathize with people who get those dick. I, I scared myself with my own penis, right? I was like, I had magnified times 10 on that thing. No, I'm not joking. You can barely see it. You can barely see it. You can barely see it. So, uh, so I, I want to create an app called Dick Talk instead of TikTok. That way it could be a repository for all these dick pics that we want to get rid of and make fun of, right? And so, and if I do this, I, I've got the categories figured out. You got the Snuffleupagus. Yeah, right? Someone got it, someone got it. Not cut, okay. We got the arc stick. He knows what I'm talking about. 12 inches plus, the guy gets the wall, yeah! Or you gotta take a panoramic photo to send it, right? Yep, yep. And then the, my favorite is the donde esta. Where is it? Yeah. Some women have gotten those in the bedroom before, and you're like, what the hell? All right, and then I've got one more idea that I'm working on. Um, I know with uh, society right now, everybody's gender identity is a big issue. Going through sex changes is a big issue, and it's expensive. Insurance companies cover it, some don't. It's, it's just a lot going on. So what I realize is that there's a lot of women that want to become men. And there's a lot of men that want to become women. So this app is going to pair them up, and we can trade parts. What do you guys think? I'm going to call it Swap Me. <laughs> but if you can't afford the premium service, there's a double D discount. That's the dumpster dive discount. So I'm going to go behind sex clinics and get all the used bits and pieces y'all need. No, no? Okay. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. That, that was a little... It went a little dark there. A little dark. But I want to end with something strong. No, the, 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 the yardstick. That's the dark one. Um, I want to end with something, and I know we can't reuse material, so I'm being very selective in the material I use, because I want to come back next month and bring out some new stuff. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my, my son. My son is uh, nine, like I said, and uh, he asks a lot of questions. A lot of, I say stupid questions, but I guess there's no such thing as a stupid question, right? But some of them are stupid questions. So, so my favorite thing to say back to him is, does a bear shit in the woods? And he, he likes it, he's like, does a bear shit in the woods? Like, the, the answer's obvious, right? Use your, stop playing the switch and pay attention for the fucking ones, right? So, uh, so I talked to him, and uh, so me and him were going on a road trip to California. He got hungry, wanted a donut, so we pulled off. Um, someone's from Oregon here, Corvallis, right? There's this like hippie bakery place around that area. We pulled up, I didn't know it was a hippie bakery place. I walked in and all the women had shaved heads and like were wearing ham. It's kind of a place where if you get a donut and you bite into it and there's a hair, it came from their armpit. Like one of those places. So uh, so we walk in and he's got to use the bathroom. So And he's nine, so I walk in with him, make sure he's safe. And in the bathroom, I'm the dad that messes with my son. I gotta be clear. We walk in, and he looks up at the, the, the urinal. Sorry, you guys are not the urinal. I'll do it over here. Um, he, he walks up to the urinal, and up above it is a big picture. And it says, real cows. And it has a huge picture of a cow. This is a legit story. Eat grass. I'm the dad that puts my thumb over the GNR and has him read it out loud. Real cows eat ass, dad. What the hell? Right? Like, I mess with him. But he got me back, and it was brutal. He waited on this road trip until it was dark, and we were in the middle of the mountains, and he said, Dad, i got to use the bathroom. Anybody been there with your kids? Wait till the most inopportune time to say you got to use the restroom? I said, but it's okay. We're going to go to the gas station. He goes, okay. He goes, but are they going to be open? He says, the gas station. He goes, are they going to have a bathroom? I said, yeah. Trust your dad. I know what I'm doing. I'm intelligent. I'm your dad, right? Follow. So we pull up to the gas station. We park. We're walking up, and the lights are on. And we get there, and it says close. And he looks at me, and he goes, Dad, what are we, what? I said, dude, don't worry about it. You're nine. It's time to teach you what guys do when we have to use the bathroom. Follow me around back, bro. And he's not coming. And I look back, and I say, I say what? Come on. I just think of it as recycling. And he's like, oh, okay, okay. So he follows me around back, and I walk over, and I'm doing my business. 
and I look over my shoulder, and this boy is pooping in the bushes. I forgot to ask which which bathroom he needed, right? He is shitting in the bushes. I say, well, we went from recycling to farming because we got the fertilizer out. God damn. So I get him in the car, and we start driving, and he added, it's my time, I'm gonna end. this is the perfect ending time. Um, and as we're in the car, he asked me another stupid question, and I said, does a bear shit in the woods? And his response was, no, but I do. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for tolerating me and coming out and supporting the live comedy. Uh, this is good for our host. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.